What was your role in Echo Football Club? Um, well, I first started on the committee, then I became secretary. I was secretary for about 20 years and finished up as a director of the club as well, the old football club. What did you have to do? The sector is probably the best job because it was involved in arranging all the matches, making sure the other teams turned up, the referee and linesman came, there was no clash of colours, uh, kick-off times, all sorts of things. Checking with the FA if it was a cup game or the county if it was a cup game. So there was uh, quite a lot involved. Um, fixtures, if we had fixtures cancelled towards the end of the season, uh, we'd often have to play two or three times a week, so you'd have to rearrange all those. So it's quite a, a hectic but interesting schedule. What does football mean to you? Football in general, or, or the football club, you mean football in general? Yeah. Probably less now than it did before, because now I'm retired. It's, um, I watch a bit on telly and live, but not that much. But before, obviously, it was uh, took up most of my working life, or most of my days anyway. What is your greatest highlight? Greatest? Highlight. Oh, we've got so many, so many. Um, probably the cup finals at Wembley were probably the most uh, memorable. And one other game at Barnsley in the FA Cup, but loads and loads of memories. <clears throat> what is a match you wish that you could replay? Replace? Replay. Replay? I think the Barnsley game, to be perfectly honest. The first one away up there. Um, because it was a game that we drew and should have won or did win, but uh, apart from the referee. <coughs> so um, that's probably the most exciting game. Mm. Did you play football? No, I'd played football for school and in the army, but then when I came out, I got so involved with the football club that I didn't have time to play anymore. So, and I wasn't that good anyway. So. Um, how did your family support you? It was almost the other way round because um, the very first game I saw, my dad took me to a cup final. Um, it was at Tottenham's ground, actually. And I was so enjoyed it that I said to him the following year, could we go and watch Enfield again? And at the end of that season, he joined the um, supporters of the club committee uh, with my mum, because they used to do tea huts and whist drives and all sorts of things. <coughs> so they were involved. Then I got involved and my wife was involved. So um, it was just a way of life for us. Who is your best player? Oh, best player, so many of those. Um, I suppose I've got, if I've got to pick one, which is difficult, uh, probably Steve King because of two things. First of all, the number of games he played for us. Uh, three things are his attitude and his loyalty to the football club. But um, as I say, there were so many. What does Enfield mean to you? Well, the Club, yeah. well, it's part of me basically. I mean, I've been doing it since I was eight years old, um, and I only stopped coming recently, so it's just a way of life for me. What's the social life like at Enfield Football Club? That I can't really answer because I'm not involved with the committee or the running of this club, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure about the social club here. But uh, the old club, of course, was extremely good. Mm. Was there any racism in the club in the early years? Yeah, not really, because in the early years you, you didn't have many coloured players, uh, black players to be correct. Um, so no, there was no example of that. We had a Scotsman player once, it got a lot of stick, but uh, no coloured players, no. Did you get to travel much with the club? Yes, um, obviously all way matches. Um, latterly, uh, we had a lot of Friday night trips because it was a long way to go, so the team went away Friday night. Um, there was tours abroad, matches in Italy. Um, so yes, it was quite a bit, but it's, most of the travelling was to away matches. What was the best celebration? <sighs> Again, so many, but I suppose it's got to be the very first time we won the uh, Amateur Cup at Wembley. What motivates you in football? I suppose at this level, I mean, nothing in the professional game motivates me because I think money spoilt it and it's, it's changed totally. Uh, but at this level, it's, it gives youngsters a chance. Um, it gives those who have not perhaps a limited ability to actually get involved in decent football. 
Um, so it, it's this level that motivates me more than the pro side. How old were you when you first went to an Enfield game? Cool, that's letting the cat out of the bag. Um, eight, 1947. And what, so do you remember the match clearly? Yes, it was. Well, I remember the result because everyone jumped up and down. It was at Tottenham. It was the Middlesex Senior Cup final, uh, 1947, uh, which we won one nil. Jackie Raw, um, yeah, Jack Raw scored the goal. Um, and I found out many years later that it was the first game that Roy Butler actually saw as well. So that's um, quite a thing we found out later on. Ms Roy Butler was a fellow director of the club. Yes, he was, he was. Okay. Mr Enfield, yes. Um, how did your dad become involved in the football club? The 1948, I wanted to come back to Enfield, um, so I said, can I go and see Enfield? So he used to take me every week with my mum. And at the end of that season, he got so involved as well, he joined the supporters club committee. Um, so from 48, 49, We'd got an a involvement with the club. Uh, Mum used to do the teas and the tea huts. Used to run a whist drive on a Wednesday. Um, Dad obviously used to go to committee meetings, which they used to have regularly twice a week in those days. Um, so it was, it's always been infilled in the house. Then obviously I joined. Uh, I, I had to go to Scotland for three years. When I came back, I joined the committee and then uh, carried on from there. So. Actually taking on a role within the club, like a secretary, it wasn't something you... Did you just sort of apply to become secretary? No, what happened was that um, soon after the club became a, a limited company and they formed a board of directors, um, the current secretary had to resign. Well, he didn't resign. He wanted to resign. There was a question of principle, so he resigned. And Tommy Alvin phoned me up and said, would I like the job? So uh, I said, well, give me 24 hours and I'll let you know, which... And then, yes, yes, please, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly and enjoyed it. It was not a real question. How old were you when you became secretary? Uh, 75, so I would have been about 36. And did it influence you the fact that you were following your father's footsteps? Uh, it didn't influence me. I mean, I was quite proud to do what he'd been doing. Um, but because it was a wild life from I was that high, um, it was just seemed a natural progression, you know, something I wanted to do. So you weren't automatically a direct member of, a director of the club at the same time? Uh, no, then I became a director soon afterwards, yeah. What sort of people would be on the board of directors at a football club of Enfield standing? <sighs> I think it's a difficult question because most football clubs, directors are people who are willing, either got a few bob or are willing to put their time and effort in. Um, one of the things about Enfield has always been other clubs have been envious of the continuity, the length of service of committee as well as directors. And I think that's probably the secret. The directors were people that had been there for some time, knew all the club inside out. And that helped to make the transition smooth from an ordinary club to a limited company. Were they just mainly local businessmen? Yes, we had... Um, not the directors, the, I mean the chairman obviously was Tommy Alman, who was a, a very big businessman. Um, in the old days, the committee, um, two or three of them, um, one of them ran a, Dick Butt ran a travel agency in, in Oakwood, very successfully. We had a committee member who worked at Ferguson's, so we had players joining us, and if they were a bit unsure about joining Enfield, then he might f suddenly find them a position in Ferguson's. Um, but, you know, that's back in the 70s before it was uh, contract players. But um, yes, it, it, it's really it was people that were fanatical, and but mainly business people, particularly prior to the, when the clubs first started getting successful, late 50s, early 60s, they were all more or less all businessmen on, on the committee. It might be a bit difficult for you to say, because obviously you do it from your own viewpoint, but the people who did get involved in board directors, were they football fans first and foremost? Were they doing something to put something back into the community? Or do you think they were looking to further their own n name and fortunes? No, they weren't. definitely weren't doing it to further their own name. Um, there was a lot of kudos, of course, attached to being a director at Enfield. I mean, they could go and 
dine out on that almost, but no, there was nobody there that used it for their own selfish purpose. There was one that might have been, but he's now chairman of another club. So. Um, but nobody else, nobody else. Okay. How often did you hold board meetings? As a, as a general rule? Um, not as often as perhaps we should, because we didn't need to. Um, because of the way the club was run, we'd, we'd, any problems we'd solve there and then, basically. Um, we'd have them occasionally, m roughly monthly or something like that. And bear in mind you obviously had a full-time job as well. How much of your spare time did the role of secretary take up? Mm, virtually most of it. Most of it. Particularly towards the end of the season, because you've got a fixture pile up usually, uh, being successful. And then there was, uh, laterally, there was all the contracts to sort out and make sure they were done. Because um, they had to be all done by a certain date uh, for the players you wanted to retain. <coughs> and in fact, you had to retain them all, otherwise you couldn't sell them. So uh, there was all that to do in the summer months. So then the friendlies to arrange. So it never really stopped. Never really stopped. Outside of the Board of Directors, there was also a General Purposes Committee. What role did they fulfil in helping oh, the club function? Tremendous. We couldn't have worked without them. I say we, the club, they were part of the club. I mean, they weren't treated as committee, they were treated as us. We were all the same. Um, I mean, they used to run all the fundraising, the tea huts, the supporters' huts, the coaches, everything. And they mm. brought in finance. Someone manned the gates. So it was not a question of them and us. It was, we were all in for a football club. And this we, was got all a, we got a, a name, but that was it. That's nothing else. And all of this effort and work they put in was all done on a voluntary basis? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Football yeah. clubs are in for a standard. Can't really work without voluntary labour, can they? No, no. No, I don't matter what level it is. <clears throat> Unless you've got a really influential businessman at the top with pots of money, which you don't get at this level, it's, it's not possible. Not possible. When Enfield was successful and managed to get to the Wembley finals, how much extra work did you get involved in in those days? Um, not a lot. There was probably more work involved in the run-up when we got matches at home because they were all ticket towards the end. So that was probably more work than the actual Wembley because it was they'd got their own procedures. They sent you a little booklet and it was fairly simple. All we had to do was to arrange photo shoots of the players, their suits, their haircuts, all sorts of bits, publicity, but that was it. I mean, the manager did most of that usually. Um, so, no, there was, wasn't a lot to do. But you obviously... Oh, selling tickets, of course, yeah. but I mean, that was, yeah. you know, was but easy. On the match day, obviously, you would, you'd sit and watch the match from the Royal Box? Yes, it's like any away match in some ways. I preferred away games because I could sit and have a pint before, watch the match and a pint afterwards, whereas home games... Um, you tend to be a bit busy and not see all the game. So, uh, but yes, it was quite. A it was interesting the first time I sat in the Royal Box to find that the, there was no carpet in there, which I assume only went down for the FA Cup, and there was more cigarette burns in the floor or the liner on the floor, I think I've ever seen. It was incredible. So from that point of view, you obviously got to witness a part of Wembley that yeah, vast majority uh, fans don't get to yeah, see. Yeah, the, the other. Um, surprising thing was when I went in the dressing room the first time and they'd got like these green filing cabinets and they were the players lockers and I expected something a bit more swish than that but it was um, it was unusual it was unusual Enfield were you know successful in the FA Cup and frequently got drawn against football league opposition do you think that they were treated with the same with appropriate respect by the football league clubs or do you think they were looked upon as lesser eventually very much so um, once we got our name and reputation, particularly latterly, um, no, very much so. And also by the FA, because the first time, or well, the second time, I think we had Cardiff, and they had a reputation at the time of having a bad following. And the Football Association actually sent their crowd control man down to see what arrangements we'd made. And we actually got a nice complimentary letter afterwards saying how well it was. Uh, run and organise the game. So, but no, latterly, obviously, because we were who we were, they didn't take us lightly at all. No, no. And were you involved in um, signing on the players? And not so much re-signing re the existing ones, but signing on the new players. No, that was up to the manager and chairman. 
But did you get involved in the paperwork side? Oh, yes, obviously, the contracts. Yeah. So were there occasions where you were involved in, say, last-minute signings, just, be, say, en route to matches or anything like that? No, because the um, contracts had to be faxed through to the FA by five o'clock before match days, so you couldn't do it Saturday mornings. You could sign them on league forms and play them as non-contract uh, players, but contracts you had to be in at five o'clock the night before. And in an era before the internet and before the modern technology you've got now, were you fairly much dependent on the postal system? Uh, yes, unless of course it was very important or very late, then somebody would hop fully up to the FA to take it up themselves. So it'd be hand delivered to make sure it got there in time. Mm. Mm. You obviously devoted a lot of your life to the football club. If you can do in one sentence, what does Enfield Football what did Enfield Football Club mean to you? Well it's my hobby. A uh, very enjoyable hobby. That's it, really. And do you regret that you're no longer involved with the football club? No, I resi or retired voluntarily because I felt it was I'd done the time I had and I thought it was time for fresh blood. And I actually said in the programme notes that there's too many old men at the FA anyway. And I didn't want to become one of them, so it was time to get some young blood in. Since I've retired, I've got a different way of life. And, and no, I don't come and watch as much as I did, used to, obviously. Um, in fact, I've only been here once this year. Uh, went to Brimsdown a few times, but not, not on a regular basis by any means. There always seems to be something to do on a Saturday or a Tuesday evening. So yeah. You've got out of habit. It's not a habit, yeah, because I, I still miss it. And obviously I look at the internet, look at the local papers. Um, so I still follow it closely, but as for personal tendencies, uh, and on a cold January night, it's not the uh, best thing to tempt you out of the house, is it? Mm. How did you feel when the club lost Southbury Road Ground? Gutted. Gutted, because it was totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. I actually applied to get the stand um, listed as a listed building so that they couldn't pull it down when they were doing their renovations but I hadn't got the time, by the time I applied um, what I had to do for forms and photographs there just wasn't enough time before the bulldozers came in but uh, no, it was, uh, I was gutted, yes, that's, that's, the, that's the only word I can use. Mm -hmm.